Good morning, River of Life. Please find your seats and stand up. We're going to read a passage together. Um, and in Revelation 3.20, Jesus is talking to the church at Laodicea. And usually we think of this passage as when someone is not a Christian yet and they're inviting Jesus in for the first time. But this was written to the church. So I invite you to read it with me together, please. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. So Pastor uh, Mike Liaki, he's a pastor in Missouri, he points out that Jesus owns the church. So why is he outside knocking on the door? Have we kicked God out of his own house? So when we enter into God's presence, we are through worship, we're actually inviting him back into the home he already owns. Okay? So, honestly, Christ is not the guest we are hosting. We're just letting him have his rightful place in our lives. So I encourage us to take a step deeper into intimacy with him, and let's not shut him out. Let's go deeper with Christ.
deeper in you. We are hungry for you, Jesus.
Jesus. We're hungry for your presence, Lord. As the Spirit was moved over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us.
to me and then I do feel the presence of God and I know that what I'm about to ask you might be a little uncomfortable this morning I ask if those who are sitting would stand and if there's nobody behind you you find the next person behind you and you go to them and you just pray for them and you, you, you ask, Lord, fill her with more. And then after you're done getting prayed for, you turn around and you pray for the person behind you. And that continues as we get to the back of the room. These words that we sing, they can't just be words. They're praises to the, our Heavenly Father. We're not asking the mailman. We're asking our Heavenly Father. Do we truly want more? As the body of Christ, do we truly want more? As a whole, do we truly want more as individuals? The Lord Jesus, we want more of you. Lord Jesus, I pray, Father God, give him more of you. More of you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I don't know what that means for him. I don't know what that means for her. But I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you give him more. You give him more. Pour out your spirit upon your people. Father God, we pray, Holy Spirit, move in a mighty way. Father God, fill your people with more of you. Let us not leave empty. Let us leave full of you, Father God, this morning. 
Let us look to you for the impossible. Father God, right now, Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you. We pray, Holy Spirit, fill them with more. Father God, fill them with more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, fill them with more, Father God. Fill them with more. Holy Spirit, fill them with more. More of you and less of me. Less. And more of you. Less, Lord. And less of me. And more, more of you, you and less of me. Less of me, Lord. And more of you and less of me. And more of you and less of me. And more of you and less of me. me gave me a picture of soldiers going into the med tent and getting the touch that they need from Lord. I believe God is raising an army. Even in prayer time, I couldn't get away from the armies marching around Jericho. This morning, I want you to know that God is preparing you to march around Jericho to take down the walls in your life that you thought were impossible. The Israelites thought it was impossible to take down the walls of Jericho because chariots would race upon those walls. But there's walls in our lives that have to come down. There's breakthrough in our lives that we need to have. When we sing these songs, we truly want more of Him. We want more of Him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. We always want more. We're like those children who always want more. And He's a Heavenly Father that never turns us away. Around my house, there are many times I hear the words, Dad, can I have a snack? And usually, if it's not right before a meal, I say yes. This morning, I want you to know that when you come to the Heavenly Father and you ask Him for more, He's not going to purposely turn you away and say no unless it is for your best interest. No, God wants to empower you. God wants to give you more. This morning, you're here for more. This year, you're, you're here to leave with more than you came. Let's continue to worship together. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let the heavens on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let the heavens on in. 
Come rest on us. Make that to cry. Come rest on us. Come on. On fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates that the heavens on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates that the heavens on you guys are holding back we got to give it to everything guys let's lift our hands up to the Lord start worshiping him praise you Jesus you're worthy Lord you're worthy of every praise the Bible says the rocks will cry out if we don't worship the rocks will cry out praise you Jesus Worship you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, Lord. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. And I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Worship you, Jesus Thank you, Jesus Thank you, Jesus The Lord just gave me a vision of a muffin tin Or an ice cube tray Filling up every space, every space unto fullness. It reminded me of a word that I heard this week, that
that absolutely transformed my thinking. I shared the message with many of you. The preacher said, we did not um, come here. We were not created to be loved or to find love or to continue searching for love. We came here to be love. And when Jesus transforms your heart and your life and you let him have everything, the wanting to be loved gets us caught up in all kinds of sins, gets us caught up in all kinds of places and searching for things and doing things and choosing things that Jesus never had for us. And when you allow yourself to fully be loved by Jesus, to let him fill up every one of those little places in our lives and let him fill it up to overflowing, we no longer have a need or a capacity for other people to fill us. We no longer have a need or a capacity to be assured or have expectations or have assumptions of other people because we're all God's children and all he ever created us for is to come and be everything that we need so that we can actually be love on the earth. Lord Jesus, I thank you that over and over in your word as we read it, as we soak in it, God, as we pray, you are always faithful to meet us, Lord God. We are here in your love. We're filled with your love for your purposes on the earth. There is nothing that we lack. There is nothing that we need. You didn't come to cover over our sin and to cover it up and to put a band-aid on it. God, when, when the Father looks at us because of you, Jesus, he sees a pure spirit, a pure person standing in front of him because of what you did on the cross. Father, help us to walk in it. Help us to look at ourselves in the mirror. And Lord Jesus, not to see a sinner that you're bandaging and you're helping along and that's limping along in this life, Father God. Help us to be a saint that is filled in you, that is perfected in you, that is everything that you want to do and you will finish what you have started. Lord Jesus, I thank you that when we give everything to you, when we lay it at your feet, Lord God, when we put all of our burdens down in front of you, you don't rebuke us. You don't punish us or correct us, Lord. You say, thank you for coming. Thank you for surrendering. Thank you for repenting because now I can take all of it and I can use it for my glory and I can create you to be the fullness of what I have for you on the earth. Father God, from the moment that we are made in our mother's womb, you have already named us, God. Jesus, you've already chosen us. You already know every purpose under heaven for our lives. Help us to stop looking around to the right and to the left and to brothers and sisters. Father God, let us all focus on, um, on you on the fullness of who you are. Let us get to know who you are. In the same message, Dan Mullier was talking about the fact that when we see a neighbor, when we've lived there next to them for a long time, maybe 30 years, we know that neighbor. But if we don't have a relationship with them and we're just looking at our neighbor, we know that they wear a red jacket every winter because we see them in their driveway. We know that they like McDonald's coffee because they always come home and get out of their car with a McDonald's coffee, things like that. We might know that person on the outside, but unless we go and sit at their kitchen table or invite them over to sit at our kitchen table, we don't really know them. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to commune with him. He doesn't want us to listen to words about him. He doesn't want us to listen to other people's interpretations of the word of God. He wants us to read the Bible for ourselves and let it come alive to us. He wants us to know him intimately. 
because he knows us and he knows us more perfectly than every other person on the earth, even our spouses. We will only be the fullness and the completeness of God when we surrender, when we repent, when we let Jesus envelop every part of that little ice cube tray of our lives. And I just pray that you take that that vision with you this week and you pray on it. And I pray that the Lord gives you a word from his living word that would cause you to think differently, to think in gratitude. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you will see all the fullness of God because he loves you because he wants to transform your life, because he wants you to have everything that he has for you. He will not hold back. He will not hold anything back from you that you ask of him. Ask, knock, seek. He will answer. Can we say amen, church? He will answer. Do you believe that today? He will answer. Amen. Through these two messages I really just feel that as God delivers us and as God fills us we not we might not understand how we can truly become the love that we're hearing about but when that fills us we truly become that which fills us when God fills us because as I was sitting there and Kay leaned over and said, because God is love. So as you are filled up with God's love, you become God's love. You become God's love for the people around you. When he is your source. And I have to totally admit, I'm human just like the rest of you. I look sometimes to the wrong source. But as we've talked about this morning and as the Holy Spirit is preaching my message as well, but God is telling us that he wants to fill us with him so that we can be all that he's called us to be. And when he fills us with him, we're not leaning on anybody else's uh, love or compassion or approval we're only leaning on his this morning it's so strong in here and as we talk about life on purpose that when we truly are filled with the Lord that purpose that we walk in is his purpose 
See, we need to find our place in his purpose. And we can only do that if we fill ourselves with him. Jesus didn't die on the cross. Put it in the Bible and say, see you later. He sent the Holy Spirit. Man, I could just preach right now. But he didn't say, bye, I'll see you later. I hope you make it to eternity. I hope I see you again soon. This is what I did for you. Good luck. He said, I want to walk with you through each part of it. The good times, the bad. And whether you're in a good time or a bad time, the answer is more of him. The answer is when that last cube is empty, that you fill it up with more of Jesus. If you want healing in your, wed in, in your marriage, if you want healing in your finances, if you want healing in your life, you don't need more of what the world can give you. If you want all that, get closer to God. Allow God to minister to you in your hurt. But we, and myself included, we, we think we can handle it. When somebody asks you what you do and you, or how you're doing and you say fine and you're not, because you want to handle it yourself. But God's saying, I'm there with you. I'm not afar off. Ask for more of me. Because if you're looking to something else, you need more of Jesus. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you've backslidden. It doesn't mean you any, anything like that. It means you need more of Jesus. And how many of you can say, I need more of Jesus? And I know a lot of you, and a lot of you have a relationship, and you're going to heaven. But when, what, but we've got our hands up because we need more of him. We need the Holy Spirit to empower us. Woo. We can't make it. And I get trapped. I want you to know this morning, God's not in the mood to make you happy. He's in the mood to make you holy. We might not preach today. If you want answers, your answer is Jesus. Mike, will you come? You guys may be seated. We'll try to transition. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we'll try. Go ahead, worship team. Just be ready. But they always are. Let's give it up for our worship team. I knew something was going to happen in prayer this morning. Didn't know what it was, but God is good. Hello. Is it on? Okay. Um, for those of you who haven't been on the prayer chain, um, I was. Well, we all say that. I got to go back two weeks. About three weeks ago, I went into the VA to get my medical. And I didn't know I would. And they accepted me. This is all a God. Had this all reversed. It's not working. Um, so.
so they accepted me, and I went in to do normal blood work before I saw the doctor. Um, so that was at 10.45, I fell asleep. <coughs> so the VA called me at 6.15 that night, and I'm like, why are you calling me? Well, my blood sugar had rose to 536 on my glucose. Um, anything over 500, you are in coma or you're dead. I felt fine. No, no pain, no nothing. My kidney count was 1.92. Kidneys are 1.3. Um, I was going into kidney failure. I was basically almost dead. But I felt fine. God had it. So, went to the ER. They sent me to Meridian. Um, they started working trying to get my numbers down, giving me insulin. And uh, so they were like, well, we need to check your, your bladder. And so they came in with an ultrasound like you would with the baby. And uh, the nurse is doing it, and she's like, she's looking at me, and she's looking at the screen, she's looking back at me, and she's like, you got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, well, yeah, I could probably go. And she goes, well, she goes, why don't you go and I'll come back and I'll, I'll redo this. So I went and 650 milliliters of fluid. Now, the normal bladder is 250 to 300. Um, I came back and it was still reading the same. It was over 2,500. And they couldn't figure out. So they ended up having to do a catheter. Um, between the time I went to the bathroom before they did the catheter and what they drained off of me was 5,100 milliliters, which could have exploded and killed me. So, number two, glucose. Here, I don't know what else, but, you know, just thank God. You know, numbers are down. Um, I still got a ways to go. But, you know, I've had peace. You know, they're like shocked that I had no pain with that much volume. You know, and it's all God. There's no way. Because I shouldn't be here. And so I want to thank everybody who prayed. Because I'm here today because of your prayers and of God. So thank you. Oh, no way. Hold on, hold on. Stay here. <laughs> if you would reach out your hands towards Mike, we know God's going to complete that which he started. And Mike's, God's got a plan for you. And you are a child of God. Lord, right now we lift up Mike to you. Father God, nothing is too big for you. Lord, we thank you for the prayers that went up. We thank you for the people who prayed. We thank you for the miracles that happened right before our eyes. Even when I went and seen him in the hospital and he looked like nothing was wrong because, he, because you were with him, Father God. Like, Lord, we just ask for you to complete this, what you've started. Father God, we pray that your hand would be upon Mike. We pray that you would open his eyes to everything that you have for him. Father God, that he will truly see the purpose that you have over his life. That, Father God, that you would move in a mighty way on him, Father God. We thank you for his testimony. We thank you for all that you've already done. And we know you are just getting started. Father God, we just ask, Lord, you fill him, Father God. Fill him, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ooh.
mistake is so obvious that God wants to fill us with his presence, with his love, with his compassion. This life is not easy. There's bumps in the roads for each one of us. But our eyes on him, is he our source? Is he our refuge? When he is, then we see his miraculous hand do miraculous things. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people and they did miraculous things. Waters were parted. People were set free. Giants fell. It's not a good book, as Kobe did so great on preaching last week. It's not just a book on the shelf. It's the example of God moving in lives. This morning, you don't have to be alone. This morning, you don't have to suffer alone. Lean on Jesus. Lean on his understanding. Lord, is so good. Let's transition if we can. God is so good. Just look at your neighbor and just say, God is good. Kobe, would you come and do announcements? No, let's just do announcements. All right, well, we'll start off with uh, dismissing kids over to Kids Church. Uh, you'll be with uh, Miss Hope, and so you'll follow her over. Uh, be, uh, she's got some fun stuff planned for you guys, so uh, that'll be great. We also want to take a moment this morning uh, to welcome our guests. Uh, so if you're here for the first time, uh, maybe the second time, maybe the first time in a long time. We're so glad to have you, so glad uh, that you chose to be with us this morning. And so we have some ushers coming down the aisles with some guest cards. And so if that's you, just wave them down. Uh, that's just an opportunity for you to uh, fill out a little bit of information so that we can get to know you and uh, you can get to know us. We can answer any questions you might have. And so, um, yeah, would we give our guests a round of applause this morning? All right, well, I think summer has started for just about everybody, and so we got some fun stuff coming up this summer. Uh, first, we have uh, the Westside Men's Summit happening here at our church on June 8th uh, from noon to 4 p.m., and so uh, it'll be uh, not just our church, but a lot of men coming together uh, for a meal. There'll be a message. Uh, there'll be a cornhole tournament, some axe throwing, so uh, it'll be a lot of fun, a lot of fellowship um, and so uh, it's for ages 13 and up, um, and if you're not uh, 18, if you're a minor, then uh, we do ask that, like, you are accompanied by an adult. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, so I encourage you guys to invite a friend, uh, come out to that. It's going to be a great time. We also have uh, Sisters Redefined Craft Day coming up on the same day, June 8th at 4 p.m. That'll be over in the Life Center. And so... Uh, They'll just be getting together for uh, that fellowship and craft day, and so uh, if you want to come out and join them, bring some sort of project, uh, some sort of thing that you want to work on, and um, some sort of snack or finger food to share with the rest, and so uh, that'll also be a good time. We have the Minister's Fair coming up on June 9th, and so that'll be during service uh, on Sunday. And it'll just be an opportunity for us to highlight uh, all the ministry and small groups that we have going on in the church. Uh, make sure that everybody uh, kind of knows what's going on. And you have an opportunity to connect uh, with the leaders of those groups. And so I encourage you guys, don't miss that Sunday. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, lastly, we have our church camp out uh, coming up just around the corner. Uh, it'll be over the Father's Day weekend. And so... Uh, yeah, if you were able to uh, uh, snag a spot up there or just uh, feel free to come up and find a spot. We have uh, some spots registered or reserved for tents and things like that. Um, 
And yeah, or you can just come up the Saturday when we have our little service and potluck and meal. Uh, so uh, that you can also come up on Saturday. That'll be at noon, organ time. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Always looking forward to that. Uh, I've never met someone who didn't enjoy the camp out. It was, it's always a lot of fun. So yeah, this morning uh, we're going to take offering if the ushers uh, would like to come up. This morning you can give, you can give online, you can give uh, in the plates as we pass them, or you can give in the box in the back. So let's just pray over our offering this morning. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity uh, to give back to you, Lord, as you have been so gracious to us, God. And I just pray that you'd bless this offering, that you'd bless each and every giver, Lord. Uh, God, and every dollar given would be uh, used for your kingdom and your glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, this morning, uh, it is Mission Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. And so we have a special guest with us, uh, Mary Beth. Uh, I'll let her introduce herself, explain herself. Um, but she is the leader of the Pack Your Bags program at Trinity. And so, um, yeah, she's got a few things to share with you guys this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this is my, my first time to Idaho. So thank you for wel welcoming me. Uh, I feel an odd connection to your church um, because last night I was having dinner with Hope and Kobe and Brent and Marissa, and this morning I get to sit with Maddie in church, and then Sine currently is living in my house. Uh, so, and we've traveled the world together. I was sitting here thinking about um, the places that we've gone, and when um, Hope and I pulled into the parking lot this morning, and um, I said, it is amazing how God sees us and takes us from right here in the middle of nowhere, or Ellendale, North Dakota, which is further into the middle of nowhere, um, to the Philippines, to South Africa, to Israel, to Turkey, to Greece, to India, to all of these places. And uh, so I, and the other reason that I felt an odd connection is y'all are huggers. <laughs> and I come from Tennessee and they are huggers, but North Dakota, they're not huggers. They're not huggers. So, um, but you probably don't feel a connection to me like I do to you. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself and about what I do. Um, I've grown up in a, a, a small Assemblies of God church my whole life in Middle Tennessee, and we had Mission Sunday, just like you guys, and we had missionaries come all the time. And so as a, a little girl, as a teenager, I said, okay, Lord, I'll do anything but be a missionary. Because when missionaries would come, they're so weird. Missionaries, are, they get up and they say things like, swadika, which is, hey, what's up in Thai? But I didn't care because I spoke English. Or they'd be wearing funny clothes, and I'd be like, I did not see that at Target. Uh, and they were like, in my village, we eat monkey brains. And I'm like, in mine, I eat Chick-fil-A. So, uh, and the, all of that to say, then they, I was like, oh, and they're always poor because they're always asking for money. And so I thought, I want no part in that. But at 18, the Lord asked me to go on a, a short-term, one-week missions trip to Quito, Ecuador. And uh, I realized there what God had created me to do. And it's such a wonderful thing to realize what your creator created you to do. And so now I'm in such a unique position. Several of you asked, where are you a missionary to? And I've been a missionary with Assemblies of God World Mission for 16 years. Uh, I've lived in Thailand. I've lived in Nepal. I've um, traveled the world. But right now, I live in Ellendale, North Dakota, as the director of Pack Your Bags. Um, and it truthfully, again, I feel like I have found what the Lord created me to do. Um, because, and it's so, I've loved everything that was said this morning uh, yesterday, they took me on a little tour of the surrounding towns, and one of the things that I noticed was Jacob's Well. Now, I said, oh, wow, you know, and I, looked, I was like, oh, it's a bar. <laughs> and I was telling them, I was like, why, why is it called Jacob's Well? And um, then, I've never been to Oregon either, so we, we crossed a bridge and went over into Oregon, and they took me to a store that I was like, yeah, this is Oregon. Uh, it had, like, you could spray this stuff in your mouth, and it was like, it gets rid of irritability. It was like a 
health food store. But uh, if you're trying to irritability, there was, you could buy a drink that brings you joy. And I was like, the fruit of the spirit in a tube, this is great. It said it got rid of irritability, melancholy, and something else. And I was like, can I just buy these and spray students? Is that how that works? But those two things to say, what the Lord had laid upon my heart to share, they've already really shared this morning. Um, Because I want to explain to you why what I'm doing it in Ellendale and what we're doing throughout the world is how it fits and how, how God uses those things. Because here's Jacob's well, and we all know about Jacob's well in the Bible. And I love what your pastor's wife said this morning about we all, we are created to love and to be loved. And so everybody's reaching for that. Some people are going to Jacob's well here in your town. Some people are going to the word of life. Um, The people that we minister to overseas are going to Buddha, are going to Allah, are going to thousands of Hindu gods. But they all are looking for the same thing. They just don't know it. It's that love. It's that who were they created to be? And so... I think about them and I'm like, oh, we got it. We got to, we've got to do missions. We got to get to the people who do not know Jesus. But what I've noted is at Trinity Bible College, when students come in, how many, I mean, do I have any Gen X people in the room? Am I alone? Any Gen X? Okay, good. We're still young. It's okay. Uh, How did you hear from God or how did you get information when you were a teenager? If somebody wanted to talk to me, they had to call a landline and go through my mama, who would then tell them whether or not they could talk to me. (laughs) Or if a college or anybody wanted my attention, they could send me something in the U.S. mail. I'm really not that old. But now, everybody's got 24-7 access to our, our brains. Like, they can text us, they can call us, they can Snapchat us, they can reach out to us in so many different ways. And so, when I think about going on that mission strip and hearing from the Lord and how simple that seemingly was, that is not the same case for my students that are coming in now. And they want to be loved. And sometimes they do go to Jacob's Well, and sometimes they, they do go and they're like, maybe this spray will work to help with my anxiety or to help with my depression. But we all know that it's Jesus. Like, we have the answer. And so I get these students, and they come in, and I, I loved spending time with them last night and hearing what they do here in your church and here in your community. And, you know, Maddie even leaning over and telling me, like, oh, I'm reading this book about how God is love. And, and I'm like, okay. But they came to Ellendale, North Dakota to pack your bags to, truthfully, it gets, it gets quiet there. And what I get to do is facilitate opportunities for this generation to hear from the Lord. Facilitate opportunities for them to worship, to read God's word. Can they do that right here? Yes. But we remove a lot of distractions. Then once we, we've got a solid foundation there, I say, okay, let's go, and I want to introduce you to some people who don't know Jesus. And it's not just the, in India with the Hindus or uh, in Bangladesh with the Muslims or in Thailand with the Buddhists, but we go to the assisted living down the street because those people are overlooked, and they need the love of Jesus too. We're in the public school because those kids need Jesus. And so just a broad sowing there of The whole world needs Jesus. And there are so many wells that we can drink from, so many sprays that we can spray. But the answer is Jesus. He is life. He is peace. He is love. He is all the things. And so um, I am so fortunate to get to know what God created me to do and to do it and to walk this generation through that. And in the process of doing that, going to the ends of the earth to share Jesus with those that don't know him. So thank you for giving to missions. Whether you give to me or not, I don't care. But thank you for, and also thank you for investing in the young people at this church. They are some of the finest ones uh, that have ever come through our program. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're going to take an offering this morning for Mary Beth. Uh, She is the director at Pack Your Bags, but she still serves as a missionary for the Assemblies of God. So she lives and she's able to do the ministry she does at Pack Your Bags, which she does with such excellence because 
of uh, the generosity of churches. And so uh, we want to just bless her this morning. Uh, she has, has um, you know, as, a, as speaking from personal experience, you know, when you go to churches and you speak, um, you, you have to kind of bridge this gap between uh, where you're going and the people you're ministering to and to the people that you're speaking to at the church. Uh, but here, Mary Beth is speaking, and our church uh, has uh, five, six students that have gone through her program uh, that are a blessing to our church and have, uh, are doing incredible things for the kingdom of God. And so uh, her ministry and what she does is just so incredible. So we just want to bless her this morning. Uh, let's pray over the offering. And, and yeah, Lord, I just pray that you would... Uh, <clears throat> Be with us the rest of the service, God, that your will would be done, the Lord, that you would be speaking and moving in mighty ways. God, I thank you uh, for Mary Beth and the ministry she does, uh, the Pack Your Bags program, Lord. And I just pray that you would uh, just continue to raise up this next generation to go out and do your will among the earth, Lord. And uh, so just pray you bless this offering on each and every giver. In your name I pray. Amen. My name is Jerry Courtney and I'm Scott Moore and we're here to talk a little bit about our hearts and the Lord and Jesus. So I used to teach martial arts here years ago for 11 years and recently God has laid it upon my heart to uh, try to help everybody I can. There's bad things that happen to good people and the circumstances there's a lot of things we can do to help people protect their families and their and their loved ones. Um, River of Life has let us teach here. We teach for free. And I just want to see young people and young children be able to protect themselves. So it, it's a big deal to me because bad, bad things are happening. Yeah. So if you, uh, Thursdays at six, about 6.15, when we start, you're welcome. It's free. Um, we ask nothing because all we want to be able to do is to give you some ideas for self-defense and how to praise Jesus Christ as we go through the night. There's a lot of things in the Bible that are very accurate to what's going on in the world today. And if you want to know that, you can ask us and or you can just visit uh, the River of Life and just be a part of an incredible family that I've been a part of. And uh, my brother has decided to be crazy and help me out. And uh, so that's what we're doing. And we love what we're doing. So come and hang out with us. It's uh, very family oriented. It's not regimented as harshly as going to a martial arts school, but um, you will learn some incredible skills. And uh, I've been into martial arts most of my life. As well as I have as well. And you will have fun. Um, come and join. Come and see what we have to offer. And I'll guarantee you, you won't go away unhappy. You'll have fun too, because I'm a very large kid. And he's a large kid. <laughs> I can attest to that. Marlo came and she brought sticks home. And we were trying to make sure she don't beat us up with them. But, uh, man, today's... Just an awesome day. I know sometimes as a pastor, you wonder what God's doing. I don't follow you around, check everything you're doing or those, but when we hear testimonies like Mike's and see God moving in different ways in different people's lives, when we go out on Now Tuesday and we interact with people and we pray, and there's a move of the Holy Spirit when we pray over them. You begin to see God work. And you get to see God move. As an Assemblies of God church, we're not a church who looks at the Bible and says that these things happened a long, long time ago. 
We believe that the Holy Spirit is moving and active and empowering each one of us to do the things that God has called us to do. And uh, Dave shared this testimony with me when it first happened, and but I want him to sh- share this because it's how God moved. And I won't say anything more because I want him to share. Um, so I've got four kids for you, for you that don't know. Um, my second oldest uh, was riding his bike, ended up going over the handlebars, ate the highway. Um, broke the tip of his the tip of his elbow off, like you could see it in the X-ray floating right there. Um, and they talked about what three, four other fractures, two and five fractures. They weren't for sure because of swelling. Um, so my grandpa and grandma, and me and my wife, end up praying for him. Um, and within three weeks, we took him to a specialist. The specialist kind of looked at my wife, was like, um, "This kid's arm's not broke, maybe bruised, but not broke." So. <laughs> It, through God, it healed him, and I mean, three weeks time frame, and it was no breaks, so, yeah. <laughs> Isn't God good? That's a miraculous thing. I just want to say, like, we, you know, Robert and Jenny shared a a touch for their granddaughter who had hives all over their body. We, we're seeing God move and do things. And again, you know, sometimes as a pastor, you, you come here on, on Monday morning and it's lonely. And, well, it is this week because school's out. And usually there's a bunch of commotion. But you wonder sometimes, like, what's God doing? Why are we here? What's... And then you hear the testimonies and you see God moving. Through prayer that we believe that the sick will be healed when we call upon the name of Jesus. We believe that God is moving active in our lives. We see it this morning when he's uh, he's already preached a good portion of the message that he's placed on my heart. But I, like I said, I have six kids and I know you got to tell them things more than once. So sorry, guys. (laughs) But God wants you to get this today. God wants you to know that we, uh, as a church, uh, if you look in the back, there's pamphlets on the tables, and they have our mission statement that life on purpose, that we believe we are Holy Spirit-empowered people. And I know this is partly what, we, what I talked about a couple of weeks ago, but we are Holy Spirit-empowered people. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, that one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises you have promises from God if you know him as your savior you have promises from God these are the promises that enable us to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires This week, we are going to continue on this series. And if you didn't uh, come last week and hear Pastor Colby, he did an awesome job of telling us why the Word of God is a foundation to our faith. I encourage you to go back and watch it if you weren't here. But I know that each one of us has sat in the movie theater and we, we get ready to see a superhero movie. When we go there to, and we get our popcorn and our soda and we just want to see things get blown up. We want to see things fly around the screen. We came there and then when I was thinking about this, it reminded me of, of the story of Spider-Man. Peter Parker goes to a museum and he gets bit by a spider. He goes home and there's, there's this, he feels sick and he feels like, and he begins to rest. And, and as he's resting, there's a transfor, uh, transformation that's taking place. 
And, and we see it, it take place and we begin to see him kind of fumble with the powers that he's given by this spider. We see him kind of, of try to figure out what's going on and, and he, he looks in the mirror and he sees that he's, he's muscular and that he tries to climb up a wall and then he sees these things on his arms that he can shoot and, and at first they're just shooting everywhere but then he begins to understand what's, what's going on and what they're used for. And usually there's some hilarious scene where he, he doesn't really understand his powers, but he knows something's different. And, he, and, he, and he's about to get his butt kicked, or he's about to... Uh, sorry, I said butt. He's about, <laughs> he's about to get all messed up, and then this superpower comes through for him, and he begins to, to, be, to be superpower man. And then usually there's a, a downfall where, where he's got this new awesome suit and he's got these new awesome powers, but he doesn't quite understand their limitations. And it was funny because Peter Parker's full on Spider-Man and he is at the top of the building trying to shoot from one place to the next and his, his power runs out. And you see him in his spider and he's, he's in an elevator because... He didn't have all the powers that he thought he had. And then you begin to see him get used to the powers that he has. And you begin to see him begin to start. You Most of the superhero movies, they begin to start using their powers for good to help people. And then, obviously, there's this love, love interest because it's the movies. And then there's this supervillain. And usually the supervillain catches him by surprise and he's not sure how he's going to overcome the supervillain. But as the movie gets, gets going and, and, and he, he understands things and he's able to, to overcome the supervillain. And he gets the love interest of the movie. And we think that he's going to go and live happily ever after. And then the movie ends and then there's Spider-Man 2 and he starts it all over again. But as I was thinking about this, sometimes that's uh, our relationship with the Holy Spirit. That, we, that we, we get saved and the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We, if I went around the room and I passed the mic, we could have testimonies for probably days that, that are so different from one another. How you came to know Jesus as your Savior. Some of us were delivered from, from crazy stuff. Some of us have, was born in the pew and haven't left yet. There's so many different aspects of our testimony. There's so many things that God has done. The power of the testimony is so strong because it begins to, to allow people to see that God is in everything that we do. That we, we see God and, and we, we, we see God working through people who we know were pretty messed up. But we see a new person. And it is through like my first point is it's through being born again. We all need that born again experience. We, we all need to be born again into the family of God. And, and in John chapter 3, 5 through 8, it says, Jesus replied, I assure you no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Say with me, water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life. Me and you, we can only reproduce human life. Life that you see around you, what we, you, we came from a mom and a dad a, at some point in our lives. But as humans, that's where we're limited. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. The Holy Spirit gives birth to a new life. And I love what it says. If you continue to read, it says, So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The Bible says we must be born again. And then it says this, which is awesome. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it is going. So I can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Do you say thank you? Like what? I, the Bible can't explain it, so, but we looked for other people to explain it to us. 
Just like Krista was talking about, we look for other people to fill up the ice tray when the only way to fill up the ice tray is through the Spirit of God. And I can't tell you how to do that. You got to reach out to God. You got to seek God. You got to ask Him to come into your life. You've got to be born of the Spirit. And this is an interesting thing. When, when I thought of born of the, wa- of the Spirit, I thought, oh, maybe he means water baptism. But when I teach the water baptism class, one of the rec- pre- prerequisites for that is that you are born again. So then you're already born of the Spirit. So when it talks about being born of water, it talks about us being humans. It talks about that water that breaks when a woman gives birth. That we are born of the water, but now we want to be born of the Spirit. We want to take part in what the Spirit has for us. And it was interesting because Jesus was talking to a a well-known Pharisee in the midst of this. Someone who knew his Bible, and he could not understand, how do I become born again? I can't jump back into my mom and be born again. I'm, I'm out. I'm not going back in. My mom's tiny. She's half the size of me. I'm not going back in. (laughs) It's just not going to happen. What it means is when Nicodemus went to Jesus, he saw him as a respectful person. They saw him as a good teacher. What I need you today to see is Jesus is not just a respectful person. Jesus is not just a good teacher. Jesus is the Messiah. Nicodemus knew Jesus, respected Jesus, but he wasn't born again because he couldn't wrap his mind around it. This morning, I want to encourage you that we serve a God who can make numbers disappear when it comes to diabetes and kidneys. We serve a God who can re-put back an arm. We serve a God who has a spirit side of him. And we are to be spirit-empowered people. If you sit in the front row, sorry, it's the spit zone. Jesus is not a good teacher. Jesus didn't just come to be your friend. He came to be your Messiah. He came to be the Lord of your life. And I'm not, like I said, he's already told us that already this morning. But it's something I believe that we got to get inside of our brain. When we truly see him as the Messiah, the one who heals, the one who delivers, the one who breaks bondages, the one who supplies the, the manna in the morning and, 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 the, and every day, the one who made the clothes not wear out, when we believe that he's the one that parted the sea, when we believe that God is everything he said he was, then he is the Messiah in our life. He's not some good teacher. He's not just a friend. He's all of it. And he wants us all to be born again. Some of you guys might remember. Oh, I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to sweat in a minute. I might say this Greek word wrong, but tell the test I was the Greek word that Jesus used on the cross when he said it was finished. When you look it up in the Greek, this word is used in three different ways. And when we truly are born again in the Spirit, we grasp all three different ways. One is your debt is paid in full. If you owed a debt, and we owed a debt we could not pay, so he paid a debt we could not that he did not owe. He paid the debt in full. When you fully understand that Jesus paid for your sins and the sins of the next person and the sins of the next person, even if you like them or you don't like them, he still paid for their sins. The debt is paid in full. It's also something they use in the judicial system. When it says a sentence is complete. Jesus was saying the sentence is fully served. Your sentence for your sin is fully served by Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. 
You don't have to serve the debt of your sin. That is already served for you. And last of all, it's a military term. That means the spiritual battle for you has already been won. He is victorious. He's victorious. And the battle is over. He's won. Some of you might remember a guy named Chuck Olson. At one point, he was one of the most hated people in America. He was part of Nixon's uh, White House, and he was sent to prison for his role in the Watergate scandal. When he got out of prison, he wrote the book called Born Again. In the book, he claimed that he had had his life radically transformed by Jesus Christ. But people were spectacle. Or skeptical. And don't act like you've not done it. Somebody come up to you, man, I really went to church. And, 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 and I got saved. And you're like, mom, I don't know about that. But people were, because of his past transgressions, people were very skeptical of what he actually become eventually all that went away and faded as they watched colson devote his life to teaching the bible in prisons around the world it doesn't matter if you're morally blameless like nicodemus or morally com uh, compromised like chuck olson you may think you're really good or you may think you're really bad but no matter who you are, when you stand before God of heaven, the thing that will matter is whether the Spirit of God has transformed you from the inside out. Yeah. That is the only thing that will matter, is that it, the Holy Spirit has transformed you from the inside out. We have to be born again. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12 says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thought except the person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thought except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. Not the world spirit, so that we may know the wonderful things God has freely given us. We have to know his spirit. And when you truly get to know somebody and you know their spirit, you can almost predict what they're going to do before they, they do it. So we need to know God's spirit. We need to know him more. We need to walk in his spirit. The Holy Spirit is what empowers us to be the people that God has called us to be. We can't do it on our own. Point two is the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 13 through 16 says, When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's word to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual cannot receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they cannot understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him. But we understand these things. For we have the mind of Christ. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we have the mind of Christ. It is only through that. Interacting in everything we do. Can we have the mind of Christ. We've tried to do it on our own. We all have. That's why we all have a testimony. Because we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit. What God has called you to do 
in this world, in your lifetime, you cannot do on your own. If it's called by God, He will equip you. He will equip you to do that what He's called you to do. You are not alone. The Spirit of God is inside of you. And He will equip you and give you the mind of Christ. It won't make sense to the world. The world might even laugh at you. The world might say that you're crazy. It's happened. I was in California and God called us to New Mexico. You know how many people asked me if I was crazy when I got to New Mexico? Have any of you been to New Mexico? Some have. And there's definitely great parts of it, but a lot of people looked at us like we were crazy. And some of you looked like that to us when we moved from New Mexico to Idaho. You asked us if we were crazy. We're not crazy. We're spirit-filled. We are doing what God called us to do. And we love you. And we're grateful we're not in New Mexico anymore. And ask your neighbor, we are really grateful we're not in California anymore. If that's not God's blessing, I don't know what is. I'm a living testimony. I spent most of my life in California, but I wouldn't go back unless God was the one who told me to go there. And it better be audible. <laughs> don't try to put a note in my box this week. But when we're people of the Spirit, we do crazy stuff. We do crazy stuff, and the world looks at us like we're crazy. I could go around the room. You've probably done crazy stuff, too. And you blamed it on God. Sometimes it's his fault. But last of all, and I touched on it earlier, God's not in the business to make us happy. He's in the business to make us holy. We're not here of this world when we are born again. This morning I want you to know that God wants you to make a difference in this world for him. He has a purpose for you in his purpose to reach the world and tell them about Jesus. And it might not make you happy in the world sense. It might not make you rich in the world sense. It might not give you everything that the world says is happiness, but you will walk down the street with a smile on your face because you're in the perfect purpose that God has for you. When I was thinking about this, I, I, what was coming to mind was the song, and most of you might have heard it. It's called More Like Jesus. It's played on the radio a lot. And it starts out like this. I've been told to live my own truth. How many of you have heard that? Live your truth. I remember giving a, a, a short message in chapel when, when, and telling the kids, we don't need our own truth. We need God's truth. It says, do whatever makes you feel good. Sounds like the world, doesn't it? Get rid of boundaries. The rules are, are stifling. Chase good feelings. That's how the song starts out. It is a Christian song, so we'll get there. However, they found these messages and invitations do not deliver their promises. There was a little behind the scenes as they were writing the songs. And these are life experiences that, that people in the group had. They went to the world and they, they began to look at the things of this world and they didn't fill them like they thought they would. There was never gratification that they thought they were going to fill. There was still some emptiness. See, it's like Adam and Eve. They didn't believe God and stay away from the, the tree of good and evil. And when the world tells us to find our own truth, it's telling us to decide what is good and evil for you. But we don't need our own truth. We need His truth. We don't need to follow our own desires. We need to follow His desires. What is okay is not okay. The next is, I found myself more lost than ever. Enslaved and bound but are to my desires, and that's not freedom. I love this song. It's not freedom. 
You find ba- you are bound. This morning, if, if you are looking to the world, are you looking to anything that's not godly? If it's, if it's money, if it's fame, if it's the opposite sex or anything like that, whatever you're looking to other than the Holy Spirit will run out. It will eventually run out. It'll, there will eventually be a part of your life that, that what you have is not enough. You always want more. If you have money, you want more money. If you want uh, notoriety, you want more notoriety. You don't want to just be the leader of the West Coast. You want to be the leader of the whole United States. You just keep looking for more and more and more. It's never fully filled because it's filled with what the world says is okay. So this morning, if you're struggling with sin, let it be sin and get rid of it. Give it to the Lord. Overcome it. Don't try to carry it around in your backpack. Let it go. Around my house, that's a lot. Said a very a lot, but we'll go into that some other day. Let it go. Let God come in and fill the void that you're trying to fill with whatever sin that you are involved in. Sin is sin. And if you don't know, just read your Bible and find out. If you put anything above God, it's sin. We need to put God first. And you know what's awesome? Is if you put God first, the other stuff becomes so much more richer. When I put God first, my marriage is richer. When I put God first, my kids are are, are richer in my sight. When I put God first, it doesn't matter what the bank says. There's usually always enough. I don't know how it works, but just like it says in the Bible, when you're born again, you don't know where the wind comes from. I don't know where the blessings come from. I just try to put God first, and I mess up. And don't shake your head because I know you might have messed up too. But we mess up as humans. We make mistakes. I've made mistakes. Sometimes we're walking around in the wilderness when God has a straight path for us. (coughs) Because of mistakes that we've made. But remember, they eventually got to the promised land. We can't, uh, uh, there's a saying on Facebook, we're not big enough to mess up God's purpose in our life. We might delay it, but we're not that big to mess it up. Romans 6.16 says, don't you, do you, don't you realize that you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey? You become a slave to whatever you choose to obey. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. It's right there, and we'll move on. The last part is, the Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day, a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours. That my new life might be secure. When we wake up in the morning, our prayer should be that we would be more like Jesus. That we would be more like him, a transformed life. More like him, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and show us exactly what he has for us. God is not a God of far away. We felt his presence this morning. But you can feel that presence every day. It could be in your car. It could be when you wake up. It could even be before you drink coffee. I know that's a shock, but it could happen. God's not limited to this building. If there's any limitation on God, it's usually put there from us. Invite God into every aspect of your life. Invite God in to fill you where you are empty. Ephesians 1, 12 through 14 says, God's purpose was that we Jews who were first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believe in Christ, he identifies you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised you long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us that inheritance he promised 
and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did, not, he did this so that we would praise and glorify him. He gave it all so that we would praise and glorify him. That we would not become prideful and think that it's all about us, but <coughs> we would praise and glorify him. It says, now I find myself more alive than ever. My life laid down for your desires. Now this is freedom. We can truly have freedom in our life when we lay down the desires of this world and pick up the desires of God. And we can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. If there's something in your life that you need to overcome, if there's something you need to put down, if there's something that you don't have to do this on your own. It's not about willpower. It's about Holy Spirit power. It's not about what we can do. It's what He can do through us. It's not about what we can accomplish. It's about what we can give Him glory for. And when you overcome the sin, <coughs> or you overcome the limitation, praise God. Lift God up. When your son was healed, God healed him. We praise God for that. When Mike was healed, we praise God for that. We don't take it upon ourselves. We didn't do it. And even though I love Dave and I go places with him and I see people healed, I love it when we stop and we give glory to God and not to one of us. When we think it's all about us, it falls by the wayside. When we think it's all about him, he continues to walk with us. We need to walk with him. We need to be Holy Spirit empowered. We need to know that there's something bigger than us. So that when us is messed up, we can call on something bigger. We are Holy Spirit empowered people. We are Holy Spirit empowered people. And last part of the song is the bridge. And it says, praise be to God. Praise be to God. You've saved me from myself. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. A new life I've been dealt. I'll never look back. No, I can't go back. I'm yours. No, I'll never look back. No, I can't go back. I'm yours. When we truly surrender, when we truly become born again, when we truly be have the mind of Christ, and when we truly understand that God's in the business not to make us happy, but to make us holy, we will never look back because whatever's back there is not as good as whatever's in front of us. <laughs> Worship team, if you would come. It's my prayer for each one of us that we would sing that song in our heart. Holy Spirit, make us more like Jesus. Make us more like Jesus. But I want you to understand what you're saying. Jesus didn't have the biggest house in Jerusalem. Jesus didn't have the most friends in Jerusalem. In fact, at one time they all deserted him because he wasn't who they thought he was and sometimes people desert us because we're not who they think are, are there we're not who they think we are when we ask to be more like Jesus know what you're asking you're asking to live a life that's different from the world around you as a church when we came here we saw the church was singing that same song in their hearts at least when I look back, I can see it because when the church opens a school and a daycare, it's not because we are bored or have nothing else to do. It's because we want to impact our community. If you go to other churches, they don't have a school or a daycare. And we're going to talk about this more later on, so I'm not going to get much into it. But we can do that because we have people who are living out God's purpose in their life who are sacrificing day in and day out because God called this church to have a school and a daycare. 
We have people that lead life groups because they're using the God-given abilities that they have to make a difference in people's lives. We have aspirations to have a ministry team go out into the streets like we did for the apple blossom because not because we're bored and we have nothing else to do or we just have so much money that we don't know how to spend it it's because we want to be more like Jesus so as a church we are striving do we get everything right we don't we're striving to be more like Jesus and as individuals we can truly be more like Jesus And as a church, we would love to partner with you to see God use each and every one of you for the purpose that he has for you in his kingdom. Some of us will start off with just Sunday morning services, lifting our hands, praising God. Others will begin to understand their purpose and they'll either join or be part of a life group or Bible study. And then some of us will begin to live our purpose by evangelizing, leading growth groups, or serving other people in one way or the other. There's many ways to serve. But it is my goal that each one of us, when we pray, we pray that we would be more like Jesus. That we would be Holy Spirit empowered people to do things that are impossible We can't do these things on our own. We can only do them through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can only accomplish God-given purposes through the power of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, if you would stand with me. This morning, I want to encourage you to be more like Jesus, to show his compassion, his love, sometimes when it's not easy, sometimes when we can only do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray. 
more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become
Bible, in our own hearts and in our church and in our city, let them know that there is something bigger than them. Let them know that you love them. This week, if you would do me a favor, this morning, Phil Rich passed away. If you would keep the Rich family in your prayers as they begin arrangements and people begin to travel. And, but just pray that God's comfort surrounds them. There's no words for us to say in a time like this. The one thing we can rejoice in is that we know Phil is in heaven with Jesus. It's not a doubt. I met with him. I know he loved Jesus and I know he's up there right now. But it still hurts. So I ask for you to pray for the family. Pray God sends his comfort, his Holy Spirit to comfort them during this time. It's never easy to lose someone so close to you and that you love so much. And let me pray a blessing over you. Lord, I pray that today as we leave this place, that we leave Holy Spirit empowered. That Father, as we go throughout our day, we pray as we started this service with more of you. That Father God, we will truly be a living example of who you are and what you've called us to be. In everybody we interact with, whether it's somebody at the coffee shop that's pouring our coffee or if it's somebody at a restaurant bringing us a meal, that there would be no mystery on who we serve. Father God, let our light shine. The Bible says, the light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Father God, allow us to be your light. Allow us to carry your spirit in everything we do. Lord Jesus, pour out your blessings upon us and let us be more like Jesus each and every day. In your name, amen. Have an awesome week. Thank you.